Welcome to the cooking show. Today on the show, we shall do a beautiful braised meat. So yeah, let me explain to you the mentality behind braising meat and what type of cut you should prefer. So to know if a part of an animal need to be cooked for a long time, it's all about how much this muscle has worked. So more muscle has collagen, more it has to be cooked for a long time. It's all the collagen and the muscle that are like all mixed up. But when you cook it for a long time, they all get individually nice and structured. And you end up with a tender and delicious meat. So that's why in a cow, something like the shank or the shoulder is gonna have a lot more work. So you're gonna have to braise it and cook it for a longer time. But something like the filet mignon, which is right in the middle of the cow. And it's pretty much a muscle that the cow doesn't even use. This is gonna be highly tender without any cooking. And this mentality applied to any animal. So if you're doing chicken and you're going for a long cooking time, I always prefer to use the leg. So yeah, next time you go to your butcher and you want to try a new cut of meat, just think about this principle and you should know how much time you should cook it. For example, if you would cook me and Mr. Cat, you would have to cook a super long time because we're all muscle, man. We're training every day. Alright, so for the pasta, we're gonna need only two ingredients, pretty simple. We're gonna use the extruder and we're gonna do some harissa pasta. We're gonna have a nice orange looking pasta, it's gonna be flavorful. So yeah, that's it, that's it for the pasta. Whew. Look, look at the color, just look at the color, look at the like, different stuff. It's just, how could this not be amazing if we burn it? If we burn it, probably not gonna be amazing. But other than that, we're surely gonna nail that. First, we're gonna brace our beautiful lamb shank. Look at this beauty. We got a bunch of spices. This mix of spices named Raselanut. The mix of spice usually contains cumin, ginger, cardamom, pepper, lavender, roses, saffron, turmeric, nigel, nutmeg, clove, and much more. And after that, we got some bay leaf. I'm gonna add some oregano. And I'm gonna add a little bit of thyme too. Garlic, onions, simple stuff, the classic stuff, the base. We're gonna deglaze it with some red wine. We got our old canned tomatoes. I'm gonna add a little bit of honey, just to balance it. You know, usually we add some sweetness. Honey is gonna work well in this one. It's gonna be more perfume. After that, we're gonna do a minty yogurt. So I, I got some yogurt and I got some, a little bit of citrus and some mint. And we're just gonna top it with a little bit of pistachios and some edible flowers and some parmigiano reggiano for the pasta. All right, we're gonna start by putting our lamb shank into a high heat Dutch oven that has been oiled and we put a little bit of salt on top and we color them on each side. After that, we're gonna reserve it to the side and while keeping the heat on, we're gonna add our diced onion. We're gonna make them sweat a little bit. Then we can start by adding our garlic and all of the spice and dry herbs. We're gonna put the thyme in there and let it sweat a little bit more and then we're gonna deglaze it with some red wine. After that, we're gonna add our old tomato that we crushed with our hand. We're gonna put some honey in there, salt and pepper. We're gonna put back our lamb shank in and we're gonna cover and cook them at 300 Fahrenheit in the oven for two hours. Halfway, we're gonna turn the shank and 30 minutes before it's ready, we're gonna get the cover off. All right, now we're gonna do our mint yogurt. I'm adding the mint to the mortal, I'm adding some salt. I'm crushing the mint, then I'm adding the yogurt, the citrus, mixing everything together and there we have it, our mint yogurt. Looking nice and green. All right, it's time to do the pasta. I got the simulan to a bowl and I'm adding the mix of Irish sand water. Adding it slowly until we get a sticky consistency. Then I'm putting it into the extruder. And then when it's inside the extruder, it's pretty much easy. You just let the pasta come out and then you boop, get them off. Make sure you always got a flour surface so it doesn't stick. And it's kind of amazing how they curve and they're gonna stay curved like this when you cook them. I, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. Perfect pasta shape to scoop the sauce. All right, our lamb shank are ready, looking tender. We're gonna let them rest in the pot. While it's resting, I'm doing myself a little minty cause you know, I I'm thirsty with some beautiful mint from the garden. Then we're gonna cook the pasta into salted boiling water. You just cook them until they're ready and then we drain them. Then I'm gonna take the sauce that was into the lamb shank and I'm just gonna reduce it a little bit, adding some parmesan and if it need a little bit of salt. When it's nice and thick, we're gonna add our pasta and just mix everything together. I mean, this is already super flavorful. All right, it's playing time. We put our pasta in, then we're gonna top it with our lamb shank. Look at this bad boy. Next, we're gonna cover it all with our mint sauce. Make sure you put a lot of that. It is super flavorful and it balances the whole dish. 
and I personally like to top it with the pistachios and a little bit of edible flour. And I'm adding some of the mint from the garden too. And there we have it guys, the perfect lamb shank. This pasta is amazing. There's so much flavor, so much color. It's a beautiful piece of meat and I think we did it on her. This is probably my favorite meat to braise. It is just nice and fatty so everything is tender and it got a lot of taste. And with the pasta and the sauce, it was just amazing. Everything went well together. It's, it's just a banger. You gotta do it. Come on, man. Look at this, look at this meal, look at this tea. A nice mint tea going with this. Perfect pairing. Okay, do we, I, I guess I'm just gonna go into it because it, it's looking flicking, flicky good. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. The meat is just so freaking tender, man. You taste it and just melt into your mouth. There's so many things going on, it's kind of overwhelming, but in a beautiful way. Question of the day, since we use so many spices, uh, what is the spices you use the most? Probably saffron, number three. I love saffron stuff, and I feel like saffron is probably one of the top tasting spices. You know, it's powerful. Second one would be cumin, man. I mean, you put that in everything, you know, falafel, you put that into your favorite curry, your cumin into Mexican food too. So it's all over the world, man. Everybody loves cumin. My favorite spice gotta be cinnamon, man. When your house smell like cinnamon, like invite me, man. Just invite me. I'm gonna I'm gonna come into your house. I'm gonna smell a little bit. And smell like cinnamon. Delicious. I never done the cinnamon's challenge. So here's the cinnamon. All right. All right. Here you go. Mm -hmm. You know, that is, but I'm pretty sure I would enjoy half of it. Cinnamon is just used all around the world. You know, with apple, I'm a big apple guy because I live into a, into Quebec, you know, Quebec, we got apples and like cinnamon and apple are just a perfect match. You know? They were meant for each other. You broke me? Yes. You... It wasn't over. It still isn't over. That was amazing. We barely got a clean plate. I cannot eat the bones. Maybe Mr. Cat's gonna. I don't. I don't think he's gonna eat the bone. But the bone is bigger than him. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Salute.